Okay, so we are going to learn about EC2 user data. So it is possible to bootstrap our instances using the EC2 user data script. So what does bootstrapping mean? Well, bootstrapping means launching commands when the machine starts. So that script is only run once and when it first starts and then will never be run again. So the EC2 user data has a very specific purpose. It is to automate boot tasks, hence the name bootstrapping. So what tasks do you want to automate usually when you boot your instance? Well, you want to install updates, install software, download common files from the internet, or anything you can think of, really. Anything you can think of. So it could be whatever you want. But just know that the more you add into your user data script, the more your instance has to do at boot time. Simple, right? By the way, the EC2 user data script runs with the root user. So any command you have will have the pseudo rights, okay? So let's get hands on and what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to make sure that our EC2 instance, when we launch it, it will have the Apache HTTP server installed on it and will display the simple web page we've been having. So for it, we'll just pass in the user data script. And this script, as I said, will be executed when the instance first boots. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do first is terminate our instance. Yes, we're in the cloud, so we can start and terminate instances as we wish. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to get billed. It is fine. So now that this instance is getting terminated, we'll go ahead and launch a new instance. And that's really the power of the cloud. So we'll use Amazon Linux 2 AMI and select it. And we'll use still a T2 micro, which is free tier eligible. And then we'll configure the instance details. Now in there, everything looks fine, but we'll scroll all the way down. And there is a sneaky advanced details in the bottom left. If you click on it underneath, you see user data. I don't know why user data was hidden so much, but here it is hidden under advanced details. So we want to input user data and we'll input it as text. So we need to basically paste a whole script in there to automate the startup of our instance. Thankfully, I have a script. So the first thing we have to do is to copy the bin bash sign right here. Otherwise, things will not work. So we have the bin bash top of the script and then we can just copy all the lines from line 10 to line 15. So we'll go ahead and copy all these lines right here. And basically this is saying, okay, update the machine, install HTTPD, then start HTTPD, enable it across reboots, and create that hello world HTML page. So basically all the commands we just run in the past lecture are going to be automated at boot time using the user data. So when you do this, make sure to add that first line. It's very, very important. Okay. That input is basically going to get base 64 encoded. It's just for you to know piece of trivia, uh, but basically this will get passed onto the machine and the machine will run that script. So this looks good. We click on add storage and this looks fine. Click on add tags. This looks fun as well. And for the security group, this time we're going to select an existing security group, which is my first security group. Yes, even though we terminated our first instance, the security group was still there, so we can still reuse it. And this is perfect because it allows SSH and the port 80, which we configured from before. So we click on review and launch and click on launch. And now we say, oh, we can choose an existing key pair, EC2 tutorial. And I take this box saying, yes, I do have access to that key pair. Now we click on launch instances and the instance is launching. If we go back to our view, uh, instances panel. Now we can see that we have one instance that was terminated and this one, I'll just name it my second instance right here. It's named my second instance and the instance state is pending. Okay. So we need to wait for it to start. And now my instance is running. So if everything goes well, rolling drums, we can go to this IPv4 public IP, open a web browser, paste the IP and press enter. And yes, it worked. We get hello world from IP and we get our entire uh, DNS name that we have for this EC2 machine we just started. And so basically what this proves is that the EC2 user data script worked, was started at boot time and installed the Apache web server for us right away, which is quite awesome to be honest. Now, similarly from before, because we have set up the keys correctly, we should be able to SSH into our machine so let's try that out, say yes, and we are SSH into our machine. Finally, to verify if thing was done properly, we can go to cat the var www HTML file and we see the index.html. 
which says hello world from and the uh, DNS name we have from before, the host name. So this is perfect. Uh, we have a machine. It was configured automatically at boot time using EC2 user data. I wanted you to get a feel for it about what EC2 user data is. It is extremely important when you start using EC2 because it will be used everywhere. So I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next lecture.